Hi, I'm John Friend, a fan of martial arts and film. Martial arts and film goes back to 1905 with a silent feature. And 1913, first narrative from China. After researching this topic, I found an old footage captured by an invention from the Lumiere brothers called the cinematograph. They sent a representative by the name of Gabriel Vieri to Japan in 1897 and he captured possibly the oldest kendo, which is a Japanese martial arts practiced with bamboo swords and some armor motion picture in the world. In 1920s Japan, martial arts and film began to grow. nineteen twenties China, their way of storytelling on film also grew. By nineteen thirties China, Wuxia style, mysticism, and swordplay kung fu was liked by Hong Kong, but politically suppressed for down-to-earth kung fu. At this point, martial arts was really growing, not only in films, but here in America. Seeing it in our daily life in the military and parts of civilian Even one of our presidents, who not only had a Medal of Honor, a Nobel Peace Prize, but also had an eighth degree black belt in Kodukan Judo. And his name was President Theodore Roosevelt. We can see that the martial arts is part of everyone's culture at some point. And in film, that's our way of recording that. For instance, a young Bruce Lee in the 50s. Some action in an American 50s film. If I tie both hands. <clears throat> The 60s gave way to a bigger budget, high intensity film. The 70s was a pivotal decade especially after the 1965 Immigration and Nationality Act was signed. One of the things that did was allowing skilled labor into the U.S. That means more martial artists in my eyes that came here. Could that mean a kid in the 50s can make some noise in the U.S.? Bruce Lee is an icon in the martial arts world in today's society. Everybody wanted to do what he did. I did as a kid. Where I lived in the Philippines, they called me the Screaming Chicken. I was trying to sound like Bruce Lee, but with the nickname, I sounded like something else. 1980s. 
this decade was great for martial arts and film. What's happening, Wang? Chinese standoff. A what? Don't make a sound. At this point, we've seen a couple of handfuls of depth and story integrated with martial arts. We're really seeing balance of plot and fighting in the 80s. Even balance with comedy and martial arts. Let him ask it. I said, I, 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 I want the knife. Give that man his purse back. It's my purse. He's the thief. What you doing around here, man? And where you from? And what you want? With my right foot, I can knock out that knife. With my left, I can kick your nose. With this hand, I can poke out your eyes. With this, I can break your neck. Take a good look at my face. I'm an Oriental. One of the things they teach in martial arts is balance. We see that in most martial arts films. A director gave us some balance in the Karate Kid films. The 90s gave us lots of balance. Even films made from popular martial arts video games and comic books. Reptile.
we also get a balance of low budget films to go along with high budget films. This is probably why there was a slight fallout in martial arts films here in the US. Too many B-grade martial art films and people just got tired of the same stuff that they were putting out. The martial arts we see now in films is not as heavy, but is really a part of the storyline. Maybe you need a little bit of incentive. Okay, I help you with that. What's the matter? You missed that? It's okay, I can do it again. Martial arts and films never went away, but became something else. Just showing elements of it in some films lets us have a martial arts film without being it entirely. There you go. Deep and sound. Even Jackie Chan's remake of The Karate Kid in 2010 doesn't feel like one. It's safe to say that martial arts and film will bring great storytelling and doesn't have to be all fighting all the time. Balance will be a key to a great martial arts film. I think we've seen that in today's films.